space here. I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your day to come up here and visit this gallery. What we have behind us is a hero wall. The hero wall captures iconic moments in the game of basketball. It starts with the man who invented the game, James Naismith, all the way to the future in Kevin Durant. Yeah, as soon as they come in, close the door. It's technical difficulties, we're going to keep it moving. I promise. James Naismith, the inventor of basketball. He's Canadian, came up with a brilliant idea, which we all benefit from today. Okay? James Naismith is also responsible for the basketball program at the University of Kansas. James Naismith created 13 original rules to basketball. Those rules only applied to that era. Unfortunately, they wouldn't fly in today's game. For example, during that time, there was a rule that stated no pushing, no tripping, no shouldering, no physical contact, essentially. And we all know, in today's <laughs> game, those things happen on a continuous basis. My Los Angeles Lakers wouldn't be champions wow. if we couldn't do those things night in and night out. We have a biased speaker. Say again? We have a biased speaker, I see. We have a biased speaker. We can talk about that in a minute. <laughs> much like you guys learned with the evolution of the basketball, this is the first basketball. Much like that is the first trophy awarded to the New York Rens. The New York Rens was our first basketball team. Okay? The New York Rens played in the building you see behind me. That was their home court which also served as a casino. After games, they would enjoy live jazz music in the same building where they just completely destroyed the competition. These two pictures here represent something extremely important to New York City, Rutler Park. Now, as a native New Yorker, I've had the honor and privilege of playing on that court for many, many years. The 13th and the 14th of August represent part of our festival at Rucker Park that has completely been transformed. I don't know if you guys have had an opportunity to see it, but it is something to see. Rucker Park in 1956, this is essentially what Rucker was. Nothing like what it is today. But the essence of Rucker Park is extremely important. As a basketball player, whether you're from the New York City area, whether you're from a different part of the country or a different part of the world, if you come to New York City, you have to play at Rucker Park. If you want your name to be put out there, you want to be given a name, and if you want to compete against the best players in the world. Whether boy or girl, high school, college, NBA, or overseas, everybody who comes to New York City to compete plays on this floor. Now I can tell you this, not only is the park itself packed, but there are people on roofs, hanging on fences, hanging from trees, just to see a game, a street basketball game at Rucker Park. Below, Chuck Taylor, the name speaks for itself, the name on the Converse sneaker, right? Over a billion pairs of sneakers sold worldwide to date, the most famous basketball shoot out there. In 1921, Converse signed Chuck Taylor one to become a member of the Converse team. The interesting story about this is we usually have kids in here, kids groups. We have a chain links program that takes place on Mondays that essentially teaches kids skill development. And then on Wednesdays, we have a Converse open gym which allows kids ages 12 to 18 to showcase their skill. So we had a group of kids come in here one day, taking them on a tour, just like we're doing with you guys. There was a very confident and knowledgeable kid in the group. The kid raised his hand before I asked the question. He said, I know who that is. Now I'm saying to myself, 1917, there's no way that this kid knows who this is. There aren't many pictures of Chuck Taylor floating around. So I said, come on, who is it? The kid said, that's Larry Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Down here we have Bob Lanier's <laughs> shoe, size 22, on loan from the Basketball Hall of Fame. This is his actual shoe. 
To date, the only shoe to touch an NBA hardwood floor larger than this one is Shaquille O'Neal, size 23. Bob Lanier was a 14-year NBA All-Star, excuse me, 14-year NBA player, six-time NBA All-Star, retired in 1984, played with the Detroit Pistons and the Milwaukee Bucks. He stood at six feet ten inches. The players you see here that do not have jerseys on are what we consider New York City icons. They represent the best of the best in terms of street basketball. Now, New York City produces tons of guards. We're not really known for producing big guards. They produce quick, skillful, aggressive guards. That's what this represents. This gentleman here, Andres De Leon, played at Eastern Washington University. Okay? In 2009, he was the number one player in the summer, player of the year, essentially, in New York. His nickname here, too hard to guard. Very difficult to stay in front of this guy. Kenny Satterfield, nicknamed Sirius Satellite, played at Rice High School, attended the University of Cincinnati. I think we have a fan here, or someone who may know. Live in Cincinnati. Five one three so stand you know, up. Yep. Played with Kenny Martin, led his yep. team to the Sweet 16. Played for the Denver Nuggets. Now, Kenny Satterfield is one of the players that we have in the back on Mondays and Wednesdays, hands-on with our kids, during the open gym and during the skill development on Mondays. The interesting thing about that is the kids do the program outside first. Then they come into the gallery and get a tour. So once a kid has been given instruction from a guy like Kenny, and then he comes through the door or she comes through the door and sees his picture on the wall, questions start to come up. Wait a minute. Is that the same guy who just taught me how to cross over from my right to my left? Is that the same guy who told me to tuck my elbow in and follow through when I shoot? Well, yeah, it is. So there comes the inspiration process. We tell these kids, once you take care of your academics and you take care of the stuff that you need to take care of on the court, this can be you. You may not be on a wall such as this, but you may be on a wall at your school. There may be a Hall of Fame somewhere with your picture on it. But you gotta put the work in, much like these guys do. So we make sure we drive that message home with those kids. Andre Barrett, University of Seton Hall standout, played at Rice High School. These two guys played together in the backcourt at Rice. Andre Barrett was drafted number one in the NBDL two years ago. He's played for six or seven different NBA franchises. He is probably the best pure point guard not in the NBA today. He's what you would consider a coach's dream. He's quick, he's fast, he can score, and his basketball IQ is extremely high. Steve Burke Jr., nicknamed All Day, All Night, follows in the footsteps of his dad. His dad was Steve Burke Sr. Again, much like this era here, was a very well-known street basketball player. Attended Iona College, then played overseas, and also played in the NBA. Steve Burr Jr. has done the same thing. He's played overseas, plays in all the tournaments in New York City, and unfortunately, he tried out for a lot of teams in the NBA, but he didn't make it. But he still has a very successful career in various countries throughout the world. Lastly, Mike Campbell, much like Kenny Satterfield, he helps with our kids out back. One-on-one -on -one instruction, telling the kid what he needs to do, what he's doing right, what he's doing wrong. Attended LIU University, was a standout there, has played in many, many countries around the world. We had a tournament here called Nike Battlegrounds. He was our champion of the Nike Battlegrounds. He's also played with a ton of teams in New York City that for a long period of time continuously won championship after championship. He is the veteran out of the group here. Below, I think we all know who it is, Michael Jordan, arguably the best player to ever play the game of basketball. This picture represents Jordan during the 92 Olympics where we absolutely destroyed the competition. Didn't call one timeout, beat every team by 30 points or more. Ceremonial photo. Now what's interesting about this photo is you see the flag is draped over his right shoulder. Does anybody know why? Because they got their other logo. Because the other logo, right? Jordan is obviously a Nike 
Haggai. At that time, it was Ibak. Why I covered that up? Michael Jordan was obviously elected into the Basketball Hall of Fame last year in 2009. This year, for the first time, he is ushering in Scotty Pippen. Scotty Pippen will be inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame this Friday, along with the 92 Dream Team. Pretty exciting time for basketball. We got the Hall of Fame going on Friday. We got the World Basketball Festival starting on Thursday. Who's got it better than you guys? Cover everything. Jordan 7, Olympic Jordans, right? If you have these, probably gonna put them on ice, don't wear them, save them. They're classic, one of my favorites. These iPads that you guys see here, okay, do pretty much what the screens behind you do, what you guys will deal with at the end. These are just the intimate form of them. So for example, this one will display Steve Burks Jr.'s signature move, the move that he goes to more often times than not, and he's successful when he makes that move. This one is specifically LeBron James, Yi Jung Lan, and Kevin Durant. Moving right along, this is the skills basketball. If you notice the lines, the yellow lines that go down the middle of the basketball, very simple. The lines help you with your rotation. When you take the ball, you make sure your elbow's tucked in, you make sure you follow through, you want those, those lines to go in the same motion once they leave your fingertips. Bron James, 2008 Redeem Team. Big, strong, powerful. Former member of the Cleveland Cavaliers, current member of the Miami Heat. Second best player in the NBA. Come on, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Brad Miller first. <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Five NBA championships. Best player in the world. Come on. Don't, don't, don't do that, man. Damn. Don't do that, man. Mm. You're like, say that in this city? Oh, I, I, hey, you know what? Listen, fact is fact. That's what I tell everyone. But the conversation goes on and on about these two all day long. Obviously, these two paired up on the 2008 Olympic team where we brought home the gold medal. Below, 2006, Shoe with Kobe Bryant scored 81 points against the Toronto Raptors, much like the Bob Lanier Shoe over there. This is on loan from the Basketball Hall of Fame. The actual shoe he wore when he scored 81 against the Toronto Raptors. Pretty clean for 81 points. <laughs> He, up and coming, talent out of China. Used to play for the New Jersey Nets, just got traded to the Washington Wizards. Again, not as popular as he probably like to be here, but as the years go on, he will get better. Kevin Durant, the future. 2007 College Player of the Year. Attended the University of Texas. Drafted by the Seattle Supersonics, which that franchise no longer exists. He's now a current member of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Kevin Durant is the best young player out there. So many people say he is the best player out there. He's extremely, extremely gifted and talented, and he is the face of the World Basketball Festival this year. Lastly, the Highfield League jersey, the lightest jersey ever made. If I had to compare it to something in terms of his weight, if you took your cell phone out of your pocket and held that jersey, they're essentially the same weight. Extremely, extremely light. This completes our hero ball. You guys now are going to go through the design process with Dominic.